What is going on YouTube, Ninstar Rose back once again and welcome to another episode of Super Smash Bros Ultimate discussion. Oh yeah, we are still talking about this game, we're still hyped about this game because it's Super Smash Bros, why wouldn't we be hyped? And guys, guys, you guys are unreal, your support for both my Shadow Is In videos are unreal, the comments, the likes, the subscribes, guys. Thank you so much. It means so much to me to see so many people wanting and supporting Shadow in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And you guys are just coming out and just saying your opinions about it. It is absolutely fantastic. We all want Shadow in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And at the end of the day, again, that is my goal. I want Shadow playable in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So guys, you encouraged me to look even further, going even further beyond to find even more facts and hints to Shadow's inclusion in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So I have found some more facts and these facts are a little bit unusual and a little bit different this time around, but hey, it is still hints to Shadow's inclusion. So without further ado guys, thank you for your, all your support, you guys are absolutely amazing, but because you guys are so on this hype train, I just had to do it. Welcome to part three, Shadow is in. So we all well and truly know that Shadow has got Super Smash Bros. history. He's been in the game since Super Smash Bros. Brawl, just not as playable. He's just been there in his assist trophy, but not playable. And of course, he returned in the 3DS and Wii U version as well. And the real question is, where is he now? And we still do not know the answer to this. Again, we dug into this little theory in my past two episodes, but now we're going to dig into different territory with this one. So guys, I did a lot of searching. I looked high and low on the internet, and I got to give a shout out to my mates for this one, but they brought this to my attention. Look at this unusual piece of artwork. This artwork is actually made by Archie Comics. And Archie Comics at the time had the licensing and rights to do comic books based on the Mega Man franchise and the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. And this is a very interesting promotional artwork. It is a three-piece cover art that makes one big promotional poster for a specific game. And that specific game is Super Smash Bros. Yes, if you piece all of these three together, it makes one giant image of Mega Man, Sonic, and Shadow battling it out in a boxing arena, and it's definitely based on Super Smash Bros. Now, the reason why this is definitely based on Super Smash Bros. is just have a look at Mega Man and have a look at Sonic. Doesn't that look a little familiar to you? Well, it should, because Sonic is in fact doing his down air move, and Mega Man is doing his down smash move from Super Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS. So with this promotional piece, they definitely took influence from Super Smash Bros. 3DS and Wii U. And what's so weird about this is they threw in Shadow. They didn't have to throw in Shadow, but they did anyway. What I'm getting at with this, guys, even if Archie Comics think Shadow is worthy of fighting Mega Man and Sonic, it doesn't take much for the big guns at Nintendo or at Sega or even Sakurai himself to think the same thing. All Sakurai needs to do is see this image. All Sakurai needs to do is see the Super Smash Bros. ballad image. And there you guys go. It's already sending a message through to Sakurai saying, hey, people actually want to see Shadow in the battlefield. I know this is not real, real, real concrete proof that Shadow is in Smash Ultimate, but this is something still worth mentioning because the Mega Man and Sonic crossover in the comic books was a huge thing at the time. And to take inspiration from Super Smash Bros. to make this piece really does say something. So there you guys go. Even other companies such as Archie think Shadow should be a worthy candidate for Super Smash Bros. 
Now, there's another thing I really want to address that has been brought to my attention by another YouTuber, and he made a quick three minute video explaining Shadow's chances of not being in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And the reason why this YouTuber brought this up is because of a specific item that is in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and that is the timer item. Yes, the timer item is an item in Super Smash Bros. series that once grabbed, it either slows down your opponents, slow down yourself, or slow down everyone. It's an item that can be used very well, or it can back fire on you. But the point being is, it's an item that slowed down time. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because the Shadow, the Hedgehog assist trophy did the exact same thing. The only difference is it's guaranteed to be in your favor. Shadow comes out, does chaos control, slows everyone down but yourself. Why am I bringing this up is because the guy in the YouTube video specifically says, hey, because this timer is in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, they might have just cut out Shadow entirely because they do the almost the exact same thing. Well, here's where I beg to differ. Yes, they kind of do do the same thing, especially if you got the good effect from the timer. But here is the catch. Both the timer item and Shadow being an assist trophy both appeared in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Wii U, and 3DS. So really, in this sense, we can't really take this into consideration because, well, the timer item and Shadow the Hedgehog were both brought in Smash at the same time, and they're still both in Smash at the same time all the way to Wii U and 3DS. So we definitely know that, and Sakurai would definitely know that the timer and the Shadow Assist Trophy almost does the exact same thing. So what I'm getting at, guys, is I don't think the timer is going to affect Shadow's chances whatsoever in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So what I'm getting at is, guys, if the timer was a big issue, it would have been addressed in Wii U and 3DS. In this case, it is not addressed, and it's still relevant to Super Smash Bros. And so is Shadow. Shadow is indeed relevant to Super Smash Bros. He's got Smash history, he's got Nintendo history. So Shadow still has to be in Smash Ultimate in some way, shape or form. So that's what we're waiting for. Where is Shadow? Now the next thing I want to bring up is the Green Hill Zone stage again. Yes, now we did bring up Green Hill Zone previously in the last episode, but there's something I need to address about the Green Hill Zone stage. Now a lot of people are still thinking that Tails and Knuckles have not been spotted in the background of Green Hill Zone, and only Silver has been spotted in the background. Now I just want to confirm to you guys that is unfortunately not the case. Tails and so is Knuckles has been spotted in the background of Green Hill Zone. Now a lot of people are begging the question of why is Knuckles in the background? He's an assist trophy. The simple solution to that is, well look at the spirit train level. You still see Toon Link on the train if he's not playable on the stage. And if he is playable on the stage, it gets replaced by another character entirely. So all they need to do is the exact same. If Knuckles is on the stage as an assist trophy, he will not appear in the background of Green Hill. This could also support Tails' chances a bit because a lot of people think Tails has been deconfirmed simply because he's in the background of Green Hill Zone. But again, the spirit Spirit Train level defends Tails' case. But there is one thing I want to address about the background characters, and that is one character specifically, Silver. And I want to give a big shout out to the Orange Ranger for this one, because he's the one that wrote it in one of my videos, and he brought it to my attention, and kudos man, I didn't even think of this. Silver is in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Yes, Silver the Hedgehog is in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. What the heck? I am not saying that this is a bad thing, I love Silver. Silver is a fantastic character. But if Silver is still in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, then you can count your money. Shadow is still in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Why would you get rid of the second most popular Sonic character, which has been confirmed by Sega, mind you, in Super Smash Bros. and keep Silver in? If anything, it should take out Silver and put Shadow running in the background if Shadow is no longer an assist trophy or not a playable character. What I'm getting at here, guys, Shadow is so much more more popular than Silver. Yes, Silver is an amazing character. I love Silver. I've got a giant figurine of him in my room. But Shadow is definitely more popular. Sega knows that. Nintendo knows that. Heck, Sakurai knows that. That's the reason why Shadow was an assist trophy to begin with. So that begs me the question, why is Silver still in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Because Sakurai is bringing everyone back. Not just Silver, not just Tails, not just Knuckles, not just Sonic. He's even bringing back Shadow. The only question that we still need to answer is how is he bringing back Shadow? It's still the question on the table. So again, shout out to the Orange Ranger for that one, for bringing that up to my attention. It was so obvious and I obviously overlooked it. Kudos to the Orange Ranger. Big shout out to you, buddy.
On the topic of other characters such as Silver, Tails and Knuckles and even Shadow, there's something I want to bring up is Sonic Forces again. Now, yes, Sonic Forces was an interesting game because it really helps defy who characters are in the Sonic story arc. This is what backs up the theory that Tails does not have much modern day relevance anymore because Tails was unfortunately a coward in Sonic Forces, relying on Sonic's help even though Sonic was not around until classic Sonic came out of nowhere and decided to save him. And that's Tails' whole role in the game, just being a psychic to classic Sonic. Not modern Sonic, classic Sonic. That is not right, in my opinion. It just goes to show that yes, it backs up my theory. Tails was a popular classic character, but he's not a popular modern character. Knuckles even got a better role than Tails. He was the chief commander of the Freedom Fighters in Sonic Forces, so Knuckles has got much more of an exciting role. Everyone thought Shadow was a bad guy in the game until Shadow himself proved it wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Essentially, all these other characters, even Silver had a better role than Tails. What I'm getting at is Knuckles, Shadow, and Silver had better roles than Tails in Sonic Forces, and that hinders Tails' chances even more. Unfortunately guys, I don't think Tails is gonna make the cut simply because Sega is really brushing him aside. He's a fantastic classic character, but he just doesn't cut it for modern day Sonic. And speaking of Sonic Forces, the announcement of Sonic Forces indeed came too late for the Super Smash Bros. ballot. However though, being Sonic Forces is a game, period, still gives a huge opportunity to Shadow in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So what I'm getting at guys is the announcement of Sonic Forces happened in the year 2016. And what I bet that has happened in between then and between now, Sakurai made a deal with Sega to include Shadow as a playable fighter in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Thus the reason why Shadow got the Shadow episode in Sonic Forces. Again, that Shadow episode came out of nowhere. Where no one saw it coming. We only believed from the very beginning that the main two characters was going to be Sonic and Classic Sonic. Eventually they announced the Avatar characters, but out of nowhere they decide to drop Shadow's episode. What's the deal here? What is the catch? It's not that Sonic Adventure fans were demanding Shadow badly. They were demanding Sonic Adventure 3. They were not demanding Shadow specifically. So what I'm getting at here guys is Shadow coming back out of the blue like that has got something to do with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It just seems so perfect. The announcement of Sonic Forces happened in 2016. The game came out one week after Super Mario Odyssey in 2017. And heck, they just threw in a random bombshell. Between all of that, there's a Shadow episode. You can play a Shadow in all modern Sonic stages. Enjoy Shadow the Hedgehog in Sonic Forces. Out of nowhere! What the heck? So I'm pretty sure this is due to the fact that Shadow is indeed a playable fighter in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. That's the only way to generate hype for Shadow, by including him in more games. Now the next thing I really want to bring up is an unusual thing. It doesn't really give any concrete proof that Shadow is in, but this still does help Shadow's chances regardless. I am now talking about Shadow haters. I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube. I've been reading a lot of comments on forums, on YouTube videos about what people think about Shadow. What's surprising me, there is a bunch of Shadow haters out there, or at least more fans of Tails and Knuckles out there that wants those characters in Smash over than Shadow. What I find really ironic about all of this, ever since the reveal of Echo Fighters and Knuckles being an assist trophy, that has dramatically changed. And I mean, dramatically. A lot of those Shadow haters, or a lot of those Tails and Knuckles supporters are now all agreeing. Shadow has got insanely high chances in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The haters and non-supporters are now even converting. This is unreal. Shadow is getting support by those people that didn't want to support him to begin with. It is because the cards are laid out on the table. Echo Fighters, Knuckles and the Sis Trophy, Shadow nowhere to be seen. These are all lining up the facts that Shadow is playable in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This is insane! Shadow is getting so much more respect than he previously was getting. And another thing I really want to address is fake leaks. Now, fake leaks have been going around 4chan like no tomorrow. I feel like there's a new leak every second day for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And one guy even counted on YouTube there's like over 200 fake leaks for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate ever since E3. And that is nuts. Come on, guys. Calm down. 
down. Calm down. But there is one thing I do need to suggest about these fake leaks. Now, none of these leaks are real. I'm gonna just say this. None of them are real. But what I find really ironic is a lot of them, and I mean a lot of them, at least a good 80% of them, say Shadow is playable. I know these don't even hint to anything, but it goes back to the whole topic of what I just said about the Shadow haters or the Shadow non-supporters. Even fake leakers are supporting Shadow in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. What I'm getting at is, guys, the thought of Shadow being in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has dramatically increased. Now, everyone wants Shadow in. This is unreal. The whole world thinks Shadow is playable and it's just unreal. Shadow is looking absolutely fantastic to everyone. Everyone. Not just myself. Everyone. Fake leakers, haters, non-supporters. Everyone is giving support to Shadow now. Everyone. This is huge for Shadow. Absolutely huge. It doesn't take much to include Shadow because he can be an Echo Fighter. Let's just say for example, if Shadow is still not playable at this point and Sakurai is now seeing all of this amazing support for Shadow he's gonna be like oh damn I need to put him in the game now like I said earlier in the video all Sakurai needs to do is see it to believe it so Sakurai is definitely seeing it and he's definitely gonna be believing it a lot of people want Shadow in Smash and he's up there as the most requested Sonic character so it only makes sense for Shadow to be included now. And everyone is on the same page here. Everyone. And you know what actually even helps Shadow's chances even more? Not many other characters are standing in his way now. Not many at all. During the Wii U and 3DS era, you had practically all the newcomers that were announced in that game standing in Shadow's way, such as Mega Man, Wii Fit Trainer, Villager, Rosalina and Luma, Little Mac, Shulk, Robin, Lucina. These are all popular, popular characters that still need to get in Smash. Now that everyone is here, there is not many characters standing in the way of Shadow except for a potential handful. And I am not kidding when I say handful, it is only a handful of characters that are in Shadow's way such as Ridley, such as the Inklings, such as K. Rool and Banjo-Kazooie. They're the only characters I can think that can get in Shadow's way. There is not even that many major third-party characters left to be included in Super Smash Bros. Yes, there's other popular third-party characters such as Rayman, Simon Belmont, Shovel Knight, Shantae, but again, they all got destroyed by Shadow on the Smash Ballot. They didn't even come close to Shadow on the Smash Ballot. And since now most of those characters are indeed in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Shadow is on the final stretch. He's almost there and you know what? Shadow is indeed fast enough to get there. Shadow is the fastest character out of all of them. Shadow's fan base is indeed bigger than all of them. Yes, Simon Belmont, Bomberman and Rayman are iconic characters, but Shadow still destroys them all, even being a second most popular Sonic character in this Sonic franchise. And it's what I previously said before, the only reason why Shadow is this popular is the fact that he is part of the Sonic franchise. And the Sonic franchise is the second most popular video game franchise in the world. Now speaking of these third party characters, there's one thing that surprised me about the reveal of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at E3 and also the tease trailer with the Inklings in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate back in March. But something has indeed changed with these announcements of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and this is for a fact that a trend has been broken. A lot of people think that there is a pattern with announcements of characters in specific trailers for Super Smash Bros. Sakurai just broke the trend. Yes, guys. When Inkling was first revealed in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in the debut trailer in March, something was not right here. And same goes with Ridley with the recent announcement at E3's presentation. What does not match with these announcements from past Smash announcements? And that is indeed the third party characters. What I'm getting at with this, the very first debut trailer of Super Smash Bros. Brawl showcased Snake as a special guest at the end of the trailer. And with the announcement of Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U, at the end of that trailer, we had the reveal of Mega Man. If we had another third party character lineup for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, you'd think they would be revealed first. But that is not the case here. It was Inkling. It was Ridley. Where is the new third party guest? There is no sign of a new third-party guests. That means they have really no other third-party character to go by. 
It's safe to say that Ridley would generate much more hype than any other third party character to join Super Smash at this point. What I'm getting at with here is they don't have any more major iconic third party characters to add into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So what I'm thinking is happening now is they're gonna dig into third parties a little more. Sonic deserves a new rep, so they're gonna add a new Sonic rep. Heck, they can make an Echo Fighter out of Ryu with Ken. What I'm getting at here is guys, it's not about a single iconic character, it is about the franchise as a whole being iconic. Street Fighter franchise is iconic. The Sonic the Hedgehog franchise is iconic. The Mega Man franchise is iconic. What I'm saying is all the third party guests that are in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate have iconic franchises. That means the other characters are just as iconic as the main character. Cause without these other characters, the main character has no purpose. So guys, Shadow is iconic. Ken is iconic. Chung Lee is iconic. Proto Man and Base are iconic. Tifa and Sephiroth are iconic. What I'm getting at is here guys is these are all iconic characters, all of them. And they have a potential to be in Super Smash Brothers just because their franchise are in the game. Sakurai will need to dig into that territory at one point, and maybe that is the case right now. We would have got a new third party reveal by now if there was another third party guest. Unless if it's something amazingly huge that is completely new and completely iconic. I feel like Ridley beat them. I feel like Shadow beat them. That's what I'm getting at here. And this was in fact proven again in my last video with the source gaming results. And while we're on the topic of franchises in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, there is one thing I still want to cover. With every character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, regardless if it's a playable character, an assist trophy, a Pokemon in a Pokeball, a background character, you name it, any character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Sakurai has the rights to use those characters as he sees fit. And this was even proven. Thanks to Source Gaming, yet again, I was able to track down every article that Sakurai has ever mentioned about third party characters. With every character that is in Super Smash Bros, the company that signs off their character to be used in the game is left in Sakurai's hands. It is stated in an official interview with Sakurai himself in regarding about Snake and Mega Man. The characters have to fit the universe, but at the same time they also have to fit the Smash universe. A lot of people will think, but hey, any character can fit the Smash universe, but Sakurai made a good point in this statement. He said Snake didn't jump in the Metal Gear Solid franchise, he had to make him jump jump in Super Smash Bros. So what I'm getting at is here, with every character that is in Super Smash Bros, the company has to give the rights to Sakurai to make the character fit in the game as he sees fit. And if the company gives Sakurai the green light because they like it, then that's their role in Smash. Regardless if it's an assist trophy, regardless if it's a playable character. So what I'm getting at with this is, Sakurai had previously had the rights to use Shadow the Hedgehog. He gave Shadow the assist trophy role and used Chaos Control to slow everyone down. That is indeed in Shadow's character. That is indeed what Shadow does. Therefore, Sega approved. Sakurai already has the rights to use Tails, Knuckles, and even Silver because they're all in the background of Green Hill Zone. Sakurai did the easy thing and made him run around a shuttle loop. Of course, Sega is going to approve that because that is true to the Sonic franchise. Now that Knuckles is the assist trophy, he's coming out and he's doing, he's digging into the ground, doing uppercuts, and whenever there's no ground to dig around, he does homing attacks instead. It is still true to Sonic franchise, therefore Sega gave the green light. Where I'm getting at is here, where is Shadow if Sakurai still has the rights? Shadow must be in the game somewhere. Sega must have okayed Shadow somewhere in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The question is, where? Where is Shadow? We need to know where Shadow is. Shadow has got to be somewhere in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Sakurai has the rights. He has the rights to use Shadow. Where is he? He is nowhere to be seen. Shadow is not yet an assist trophy. Shadow is not yet as a playable character. He's not yet in the background of any level. If Shadow was not going to be an assist trophy, anymore and if he was not going to be in the playable character, you can bet Shadow would have replaced Knuckles running in the background of Green Hill Zone. That is not the case here. Sakurai is using Shadow's rights for something. The question is what? What is it? That's what is cracking my head right now. I am trying to find every solid evidence and proof 
that leads to Shadow's inclusion in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And if Sakurai has the rights, he will not get rid of Shadow. He has not got rid of any Sonic characters yet. He's keeping Silver. If he's keeping Silver, he is guaranteed to keep Shadow. Shadow is still in this game. Just where is he? Where is Shadow? Come on, Sakurai. Show us Shadow. Show us Shadow. That's all we're asking for. We need Shadow in Smash Brothers Ultimate. He needs to be playable. He needs to be here. Everyone is here, including Shadow. Shadow is somewhere. Just where? You're killing us, Sakurai. You're killing us. <laughs> all right. Oh, uh, guys, that's all I have. Yes, the facts this time around is a bit unusual for my previous ones, but they still hint to Shadow's inclusion. And it's just amazing to see everyone supporting Shadow. It is so good. It is so good. Guys, Shadow deserves the love. Shadow will make a fantastic playable character, regardless, you know, Echo Fighter, Semi Clone, or Unique Fighter. We all want Shadow in Smash. We all want him in now. Even the haters, even the fake leakers, even the supporters, even the non supporters. Heck, even Archie Comics, heck, even Sega themselves definitely would want Shadow in this game. Come on, we know it, fans know it, and indeed, Sakurai knows it. Come on, Sakurai, I believe in you. I believe in you. We need Shadow in Smash. It is time for a new Sonic rep. And Shadow is the one. Everyone is here. Tails is here. Knuckles is here. Sonic is here. Silver is here. It, where's Shadow? <laughs> We need Shadow! Shadow is here! He has to be! Alright guys, that is all I have for now. But without further ado, I think this is the perfect time to end this one off. Or I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shut up. Again, I am not gonna shut up. So guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the episode, give it a like, support the channel, spread the love. That's all we need to do right now. Spread the love like no tomorrow. We need to let Sakurai know that we want Shadow in Smash. Don't harass him. Just let him know by hashtag Shadow for Smash. By hashtag Shadow for Smash Ultimate. By hashtagging whatever. Do it the right way. Do not do it the wrong way. Do not harass the creators. Spread the love of the character. That's what Sakurai needs to see and he will make it happen. We believe in Sakurai, we know he can do it. So guys, without further ado, I am ending the episode off. Thank you guys so much for watching, and you guys stay way past cool.